Scientists, British and American, have made the atomic bomb at last. The first one was dropped on a Japanese city this morning. It was designed for a detonation equal to 20,000 tons of high explosives. That's 2,000 times the power of one of the RAF's 10-ton bombs of orthodox design.
time of the explosion, we were wearing Polaroid welder's glasses. They were so dark that even the tropical sun showed through them as nothing more than a vague pinpoint of light. Even then, the explosion, when eventually it came, was so bright that it had the same effect as if night had been turned into day. seconds later, when it was safe to take off our glasses, we looked out towards the target and saw a vast ball of fire. It was about 2,000 feet in the air and half a mile in diameter. This fire, which generated almost 10 million degrees of heat, began rocketing up into the heavens at a speed of something like 20,000 feet a minute. After 15 seconds, the flame had died out and turned into a cloud. Exactly what that cloud looked like, I do not suppose any words will ever describe. Unlike any other phenomenon the world has ever seen, it was possessed of some diabolical activity, as though it were a horrible form of life. The clouds will soon roll by I hear a robin singing Upon a treetop high To you and me he's singing The clouds will soon roll by Each little tear and sorrow Only brings you closer to me just wait until tomorrow, what a happy day that will be. Down lovers lane together, we'll wonder you and I. Goodbye to stormy weather, the clouds will soon roll by. Is London. The Prime Minister, the Right Honourable C. R. Attlee. Japan has today surrendered. The last of our enemies is laid low. Taking full advantage of surprise and treachery, 
The Japanese forces quickly overran the territories of ourselves and our allies in the Far East. And at one time, it appears as though they might even invade the mainland of Australia and advance far into India. But the tide turned, first slowly, then with an ever-increasing speed and violence as the mighty forces of the United States and of the British Commonwealth and Empire and of their allies and finally of Russia were brought to bear. The star in the window took my place for a while But I know that I'm still in your heart My place at the table has been empty so long But soon I'll be ready to start So put another chair at the table Set another place there for me I know that you've been blue And you have missed me too But now I'm coming home To you, my dear So put another chair At the table Put another chair there Another chair at the table Set another place there for me I know that you've been blue And you have missed me too But now I'm coming home to you, my dear. Put another chair at the table. Put another chair there for me. The time will soon be sitting there right back where I belong so put another chair at the table put another chair there have passed since I asked you to join with me in an act of thanksgiving for the defeat of Germany. We then rejoiced that peace had returned to Europe, but we knew that a strong and relentless enemy still remained to be conquered in Asia. No one could then tell how long or how heavy would prove the struggle that still awaited us. But Japan has surrendered. So let us join in thanking Almighty God that war has ended throughout the world.
In this broadcast, I am speaking particularly to the forces of the British Empire, the British soldiers, sailors and airmen, and their gallant Indian comrades, who with our East and West African troops have borne the heat and burden of the day, often the terrible heat as well as the torrential rain. You have fought a great campaign under hardships and difficulties which have probably never been equaled. You have beaten on the ground, in the air, and on the sea a most stubborn enemy, a fanatical enemy, from whose vocabulary the word surrender is officially deleted and is replaced by the word suicide in the last resort. This you have done in fever-stricken lands, far from your homes, in conditions totally new and strange, with little help from road or railway, and where often movement would have been impossible but for your magnificent air transport. Yet never once have you faltered or failed. Never once has your courage or your dash been dimmed. The long list of VCs and other decorations for gallantry indicates the spirit that has animated all ranks and the ascendancy over the enemy that your bravery won for you. Into each 
life some rain must fall But too much is falling in mind Into each heart some tears must fall But someday the sun will shine Some folks can lose the blues in their hearts But when I think of you Another shower starts Into each life some rain must fall But too much is falling in mine Into each life some rain must fall But too much, too much is falling in mind Into each heart some tears must fall But someday the sun will shine Some folks can lose the blues in their hearts But when I think of you Another shower starts Into each life Some rain must fall But too much is falling in mind Into each and every life Some rain is got to fall but too much of that stuff has fallen into mine and into each heart some tears has got to fall but I know that someday that sun is bound to shine some folks can lose the blues in their heart But when I think of you, another shower starts Into each life, some rain must fall But too much is falling in my We have known the bitterness of defeat and the exaltation of triumph And from both, we have learned there can be no turning back. We must go forward to preserve in peace what we won in war. Stripes and cries.